When you bring up the discussion of what is the best looter shooter of all time, you will often hear one name come up in the argument of the greatest. Strap yourselves in tight, because in this chapter of Remembering Borderlands, we're going to be taking a look at arguably one of, if not the best looter shooters to ever grace the genre. Borderlands 2. Being a sequel to one of the most successful games of 2009, Borderlands 2 was released on September 18th of 2012 to a very positive reaction from fans and critics alike. However, in order to keep things fresh this time around, Gearbox knew they had to improve on the formula, so they did this by adding four new playable Vault Hunters. Maya the Siren can phase lock enemies into the air and then relentlessly torture them against their own will, Axton the Commando can summon turrets to aid him in battle, Zero the Assassin can go invisible and then unleash a barrage of pain in a blink of an eye. And finally, Salvador the Gunzerker can dual wield any two weapons in the game for massive damage and huge survivability. But you wanna know what's even cooler about all of this? It's the way that we're introduced to our new set of characters. A badass train cutscene which not only introduces us to them, but also the villain of this game. It's cute that y'all think you're the heroes of this little adventure, but you're not. Welcome to Pandora, kiddos. Borderlands 2 also did something that Borderlands 1 did not, by later adding on two DLC Vault Hunters for us to play as. Gage the Mechromancer can summon her Robo BFF Death Trap, a killer robot capable of so many things in order to help Gage out, and Creek the Psycho is a buzzsaw wielding maniac blowing up and meleeing everything in his path. These characters were a smash hit and would come to be loved by fans so much that Gearbox would bring them back for features in later games. Now, before we break down this masterpiece of a game, I think we should do a little story recap. So in Borderlands 2, we learn that the vault opened in Borderlands 1 triggered an eruption of an alien material known as Iridium. Iridium can be used to enhance features and aspects of any beings in the galaxy and also charge vault keys. Enter Hyperion's CEO, Handsome Jack. Jack is trying to charge the key in order to wake the warrior, an alien being which can be controlled by whoever opens the vault. Jack wants to use the warrior to bring peace to the planet, at least in his eyes, but what Jack actually wants to do is wipe the face of Pandora of all of the quote bandits, however that also includes us vault hunters. We learn during the story that Angel, the weird girl from the first game, is actually Jack's daughter and is a siren, but even more shocking is that Angel tricked us into opening the first vault in Borderlands 1 knowing that Jack would later go in to profit off of our deed. So in Borderlands 2, we'll travel to Sanctuary to meet our past four vault hunters and a bunch of new friends in order to team up and take out Handsome Jack and stop the warrior. But really, as complicated as it sounds, that's just scratching the surface. If you're watching this video right now and you don't already own the game, then do yourself a huge favor and pick yourself up a copy, because it is fantastic. In fact, the story of Borderlands 2 was so great that not only is the game up for discussion as one of the best looter shooters of all time, but Handsome Jack is often regarded as one of the best gaming villains of all time. Like seriously, that right there is when you know you have a great writer on your hands. But don't just take my word for it, because by February of 2014, Borderlands 2 had sold over 8 million copies. And let's not forget all of the awards it was nominated for and won. This game is a masterpiece, and whether or not you like it, you cannot deny the level of success that it reached due to just how many people enjoyed playing it with friends or alone. And I mean, come on, IGN gave it a 9 out of 10, that speaks volumes. And to top all of this off, just like in Borderlands 1, this game featured a plethora of great DLCs, and some not so great ones too. This game also featured a new kind of DLC in the form of headhunter packs, mini DLCs in which you would complete one little mission line and then get to fight a mini raid boss over and over and over again. And finally, Borderlands 2 also introduced purchasable cosmetics for your character. Now what I love about all of this is that with such a huge array of content and very little force in your hand in the game, every playthrough in BL2 is different. For example, my preferred third way to play is to start the game and then make it to Sanctuary, doing all of the side missions along my way, and then farm Savage 
usually for an unkempt Harold and then use that unkempt Harold to run me through the snowman headhunter until I'm high enough level and geared enough to run the story up until Bloodwing. At this point I like to run the Hammerlock DLC and the Tina DLC before finishing the game and then completing the Son of Craw DLC. And if I'm too tired to do any of that then Golden Chest. Now do you see how intricate all of that sounds? And that's just my preferred way to play. Imagine all of the thousands of people still playing today. This level of freedom really just makes you feel in control and always keeps the game feeling fresh. Borderlands 2 also added in an insane mechanic called rocket jumping and you know whilst grenade and rocket jumping were somewhat possible in Borderlands 1 it wasn't until 2 that these methods became widespread for farming bosses and speedrunning. And even though rocket jumping would come to be almost non-existent in Borderlands 3, rocket jumping played a huge role in the success of Borderlands 2 farming and speedrunning nonetheless. Also while we're on the subject of new things Borderlands 2 introduced we would be foolish not to include the secret stash. In a nutshell, the secret stash acted as a four slot bank which you could put your items into on one character and then hop over to another character and then retrieve those items. This made it so that solo players could carry gear over to their new characters if they needed to and it was really handy to not have to have your friend there to drop the new loot over to you. So at this point you're probably thinking, yeah, okay Epic, so the game added some new stuff. Is that all it takes for you to call it the best game ever? No, because it also improved upon features from Borderlands 1 too. For example, the new use station got a complete overhaul, now adding a head and skin system. These were cosmetic items that you could farm for, much like any other item in the game, in order to change your character's appearance. Borderlands 2 also completely overhauled farming, giving multiple side missions their own farmable items, and while that was already a key feature in Borderlands 1, there were new ways to do it in Borderlands 2. For example, if you really wanted to, you could farm Moxie's slot machines for items, although I have no idea why you would ever want to waste your time on the slot machines. You could farm the golden chest in Sanctuary for a decent quad or plasma caster and then wreck face with it. Or you could go and farm chubby enemies, a brand new type of beefy enemy which were rare to find but had a very high chance of dropping rare items. Also, speaking of there being more in Borderlands 2, we once again need to call back to Headhunter Packs, which single-handedly added a ton of depth to the game, allowing for more freedom over how you run a character. And if we could just jump back to brand new additions for a second, it would be foolish of me not to mention Iridium, a brand new farmable currency which would come to be a mainstay in the franchise going forward. It would drop from mission rewards, enemies, and bosses. You could then spend your hard-earned Iridium with Crazy Isle in Sanctuary in order to purchase storage deck upgrades, a big change from Borderlands 1's mission reward system. Now, I'm not sure if I speak for everyone else here, but I loved the introduction of Iridium. It was implemented in such a way for me personally that just worked flawlessly with the game, almost as if it was meant to be in there from the start. And honestly, there's not much else in the game that doesn't share this trait in my opinion. From the introduction of new enemy types, new bosses, and even new DLC styles, I just felt like Borderlands 2 hit the nail clean on the head with every addition. Even Slag. Now I know what you're saying, Epic Slag sucked, do not even dare say that Slag was a good addition to the game or else I will dislike the video and go and ju just stop. Take a breath and just cool down a little. Whilst many people do not like Slag, as they feel it served as more of a crutch than a feature in the higher difficulties, I actually believe that the real issue here is that people didn't understand it. So for those out of the loop, Slag was a new element introduced which when affecting enemies would debuff them, making them take more damage. The same also would apply to the player. Now from what I was able to gather from multiple people's opinions on Slag, it seems that what they hate the most is just how crutch it became when you hit UVHM or even more so the OP levels. OP levels basically served as a super endgame challenge for top tier players who were able to beat Digistruct Peak, a long gauntlet in which you would have to make it to the end alive in order to gain one OP level. Each time you gained an OP level you would refarm your gear for the new OP level all the way up until you hit 10 where enemies are insanely overpowered. 
The problem with OP levels is that they made the game very, very difficult, and enemies would feel like walking titanium tanks without the help of the slag element. And that right there is what people hated. It was having to use slag all of the time in order to kill anything at OP levels or even UVHM aka playthrough 3. And even though I fully agree that having to use a certain element just to kill an enemy or a boss is tough, it has quite literally always been that way since Borderlands 1. And seriously, just think about it for a second. You'll use the shock element to kill shielded enemies, fire element to kill flesh type enemies, corrosive to kill armored enemies and robots, explosive to make things explode. And then with the addition of slag, you could pretty much do all of that at once a lot easier. For this reason, I never really understood the hate against slag. I mean, sure it was crutch, but there were plenty of amazing slag weapons in BL2 that worked fine on OP10. And I mean, come on, having one element work against nearly all enemy types? Now that is cool. I think mostly it's sort of a love-hate relationship when it comes to the element itself, but for some it's just pure hate. But either way, I won't be adding slag on the list of things that I hate about Borderlands 2 with those points provided. Sorry guys. So, before we move on to the part of the video where we somehow find flaws in this nearly flawless game, let's just list a few of the more impressive feats that Borderlands 2 achieved. So, we already mentioned the countless awards and ratings this game received, but did I mention that it also set a new record for the amount of possible gun variants in a video game? There is a whopping 274,085,055 possible gun variations. If that didn't make your jaw drop, then honestly, I don't know what will. Borderlands 2 took an already near flawless system from Borderlands 1 and turned it up a notch with so much more variety in the game. But seriously though, to say that Borderlands 1 broke down walls would be nuts, but to say that Borderlands 2 didn't build walls, that would be just insane to even think about. So. We've spoken about what Borderlands 2 added that we thought was so cool, but now I think it's time that we venture into dark territory and talk about what we don't like about Borderlands 2. Even saying that sounds absolutely laughable, as Borderlands 2 is loved by so many of us, and we often hold it so high that we put it above any form of criticism. But I do think that for this video, and especially for those watching this in the event of debating whether or not to pick the game up, it's important that we take off them rose-tinted shades for just a minute. So. The first thing I want to talk about is the scaling of the game, since I know, I know some of you guys are still boiling from my defense of slag earlier on. But come on, let's face it, if the scaling in UVHM and OP levels was nailed from the get-go, then slag would never have been such a huge crutch to begin with. When UVHM came out, fans made it clear to Gearbox that they were not a fan of the scaling one bit, as it just made the game feel like a chore rather than a challenge, and made elements like slag hated by the community because of how crutch they became. But it wasn't until OP levels were introduced that things became a real problem. Suddenly, most of the already meta guns were dropped down a notch, and guns that were already underused before the patch were suddenly never seen in the OP levels again, as they just couldn't keep up. This is where guns like the Grog Nozzle first started to climb the ladder, but not just for one specific Vault Hunter for all of them. Slag was such a great and powerful element that suddenly it dominated every other element in the game as it was really the only element you could comfortably use in the OP levels. And in turn, players had to start changing their builds, wrecking their playstyle and suddenly having to use something with a slag element on it. All of a sudden, that level of freedom I spoke about earlier got smaller and smaller by the minute and some players just really had their endgame ruined by the whole experience. And Speaking of endgame, I'm sure you know about having to replay the story for each playthrough, but with the addition of UVHM, that meant that you had to replay the story three times. Three times! just to get to endgame. Now for the casual Borderlands fan, that might not sound at all bad, as they'll most likely only be using one character, but if you're someone like me who enjoys making at least four Vault Hunters, then you'll understand my pain when I tell you how soul-crushing it is to replay the same mission at least 12 times. The issue with Gearbox's playthrough system is the lack of innovation, and considering that Borderlands 1 only had playthrough 2, it meant that you only needed to beat the game twice, which is 
okay. So in Borderlands 2, when they decided to add a third playthrough, having overwhelmingly stronger enemies just doesn't make the cut in terms of replayability. I've often brainstormed some ideas to make UVHM more replayable, such as adding exclusive missions or quest rewards, but as it stands, UVHM just isn't giving you the drive you need to complete it right now. And following my critique of UVHM, let's move on to something you guys said you hated over on Twitter. It's the quality of life changes. Now, let me first start by saying that I saw way, way, way too many people bringing up features in BL3 almost as if, well, you know, since Borderlands 3 has it, Borderlands 2 should have it too. But I don't think that's fair to say at all. Borderlands 2 was indeed missing some of these changes, but I can understand why things like mantling or map fast travel isn't a thing. However, I will agree that things like the lack of a buy all button on ammo vendors is something I can 100% get behind, as well as legendary markers on the minimap, more save stations by bosses, and auto pick up please gearbox. It really blows my mind that after Borderlands 1, Gearbox were able to include so much in order to make the game so great, but in turn left out so many little features that often dull down the overall experience. And now for my final critique of Borderlands 2, it just absolutely has to be the horrendous gunplay. Now granted, Borderlands, much like Fallout, has never really had good gunplay, but I would have loved to see some changes to how sniper rifles, assault rifles, and maybe even SMGs handled in Borderlands lands too. Instead, most times you'll find yourself firing from the hip as it can actually be a lot more accurate for some weapons and that to me just speaks volumes about the gunplay in general. But alas, we are finally done critiquing the game. I could go on, but I am not here to nitpick flaws with an arguably flawless game, so that's not what I'm going to do. So, I've got like 10 more minutes to kill. Let's talk about what we love about this game. Even asking someone what they love about Borderlands 2 is like opening up a huge can of worms, and this showed when I asked you guys at the end of the BL1 video what it is you love so much. Now, the first thing that you said, and the most popular thing people said that they love about Borderlands 2 is no doubt, and I, I really saw this coming from a mile away, it's Handsome Jack. Honestly, I would say this surprises me, but come on people, have you played this game? Damien Clark single-handedly takes this game up a notch with his double S tier performance as the insane villain of Pandora. I never knew how to explain Damien's performance, but from the get-go he gives off a certain kind of charm that you rarely see in video game performances. It's a very, very hard technique to master without coming off as disingenuous or cringy, but somehow he just nails it from the get-go go start to finish. For that reason alone, it's no surprise that Gearbox featured him in every Borderlands game thereafter. Handsome Jack quickly became the Joker of the Borderlands franchise, having the ability to carry a game through and through. Now, moving on to more things you guys love, it's the farming. And again, this is something that I saw coming, but yes, farming is so much better in this game with the large increase of named enemies, dedicated drops, and unique weapons alone. I mean, sure, Borderlands 1 had some decent farming, but Borderlands 2 just did it in a way that was so much more genuine and fun to experience over and over and over again, just like farming should be done. But but guys, if if I could just if I could just jump in here for two seconds, please. What I love about Borderlands 2 more than anything is the expansion of raid bosses. Now, granted, we had Cromarax in Borderlands 1, but that was really all we had, and fans were begging and pleading for more. And oh boy, did we get it. There are so many fantastic raid bosses in BL2 with so many unique drops that just add so much to endgame, like so much. And granted, yes, there are some really bad raid bosses in the game, but I would still rather have five bad raid bosses as opposed to no raid bosses. Raid bosses just do so much for this game in terms of replayability, especially in co-op. For example, Veracidus is a terrible raid boss, but man, drop a four-player squad in that arena and the mayhem that unfolds is just pure gold. 
There is just so much fun to be had here, and the loot more so as you search through piles of Seraph crystals, Iridium, Cash, and more, and then spend that hard-earned currency at these Seraph vendors or blow all of the Iridium on Moxie's slot machines. Everything about this game just screams fun to me, but raid bosses are the definition of it, and they are just unmatched by anything else in the series. Oh, and uh, yeah, speaking of Seraph crystals, let's talk about the new rarities. While it wasn't always obvious that Gearbox were going to add new rarities to Borderlands 2, there were actually a few that they added in. The first one is E-Tech, and E-Tech is basically a weapon that shoots a kind of iridium powered bullet, and although it doesn't actually do much different to most weapons other than a unique effect, it really isn't much to write home about. The next rarity is Seraph, and honestly Seraph might be one of, if not the coolest rarities ever introduced. Seraph weapons can only be obtained in DLCs and are given to you either from raid bosses or from using the Seraph crystals dropped from a raid boss over at a Seraph vendor. And again, while most Seraph weapons aren't all that great, there are a bunch of good ones that I personally really enjoy using, even at the highest of OP levels. And then finally, we have the Effervescent Rarity, aka Rainbow Rarity, which was added in with the Commander Lilith DLC shortly before BL3's release. Now, Effervescent is actually a unique one, since most Effervescent items have their own synergies with each other that only work in the location that's listed on their item card. This could be anything from boosting a certain effervescence damage or even giving you more fight for your lifetime in the peak. Honestly, not as cool as it sounds when you're actually in game, but regardless, it is fun to have a bunch of rarities like this to play around with nonetheless. <sighs> so, we're coming to the end of the video. And I just want to leave off on one final note before we do so. I know that we've been through a bunch of stuff that we love about Borderlands 2 and really have still not even covered everything there is, but honestly, what I love about Borderlands 2 the most? I just love the passion. From the very start of the game, it's inherently apparent that Borderlands 2 isn't made to serve as a AAA game to last forever, but rather a fun experience to bring people together. It takes the formula from Borderlands 1 and perfects it, whilst also leaving room for improvement. No game is perfect, but Borderlands 2 does its best to combat that, even when it struggles to, and the game only embraces its flaws, which in turn earns the game a ton of respect from its fanbase. And now with more and more mods releasing by the day on PC, only expanding this game's content base even more, it's hard for me to say that Borderlands 2 is going to be forgotten anytime soon. Borderlands 2 did it didn't just change looter shooters forever, it revolutionized them. Thank you guys so much for watching Chapter 2 of Remembering Borderlands. Remember that next up is Chapter 3 and we'll be taking a look at Borderlands the pre-sequel. As always, let me know what you love and hate about that game in the comment section down below as well as what you loved about Borderlands 2. But until then, please take care of one another and have a nice day.